so hello everyone welcome to the lecture number 10 of gas dynamic lecture series so in this lecture i have planned to cover the oblique shock wave so we'll see what is the oblique shock wave and why it is important to study okay so this is your in your gate syllabus guys so many time they have asked many question from the oblique shock wave uh, sometime they have asked numerical and sometime they have asked uh, some property variation theory question okay so this is again important topic you cannot skip this so we'll see this topic so let's mm, directly jump into this topic so my topic is oblique shock wave so in the previous lecture i have explained you the normal shock wave which was standing but now we'll see the oblique shock wave so where these shock waves are applicable or where the shock formation happens right so let's say your uh, this kind of blunt body uh, this is generally you will see in your uh, missile or uh, reentry vehicle so this kind of uh, blunt body shape which is flowing at a very uh, which is moving at with a very high speed so there will be formation of a shock wave it is moving with a supersonic speed then there will be formation of a shock wave right so if you see if you see this much area this much area let me make it so this much area is exactly exactly straight not exactly i'll say but it is almost straight so we can take it as a uh, standing normal shock wave okay or we can take it as a normal shock wave okay so this much area has to be analyzed has to be analyzed using normal shock wave equations but but what happens to the what what is the this area uh, what is the this shock wave this shock wave is your oblique shock wave guys so not completely is a like oblique shock wave some these this much is the oblique shock wave then further you will go these are the oblique shock wave again once you go even more these are the mac wave becomes so now i told you that where it is applicable so these are the normal shock wave then these are the oblique shock wave these are the oblique shock wave because it is at a some angle but normal shock wave is exactly at a 90 degree exactly at a 90 degree but these are at a some angle from this if you measure this is some angle this is shock wave angle i hope this is clear where we will use this and now let's start developing equations for our oblique shock wave okay now i hope you understood where the normal shock waves are applicable and where oblique shock waves are applicable now the two important three important parameter you must always have in your mind when you are analyzing the uh, oblique shock wave or normal shock normal shock wave so these are the three quantities theta beta m so theta is your i already told you in last lecture theta is flow deflection angle beta is shock wave angle and m is your mach number i hope you know this three quantities these three quantities are defined this three quantity defines your oblique shock wave now from now on okay so yeah so now i told you in normal shock wave normal shock wave your theta was at a zero degree right and beta is exactly equals to 90 degree but what happens when your beta is less than 90 degree so that's what we are going to see in case of oblique shock wave so oblique shock wave is always there will be some theta this is not at all zero beta will be again less than 90 degree guys so from now on mach number again it will be supersonic here it was again supersonic so normal shock wave says i will not having any deflection of flow uh, my shock wave will be exactly 90 degree okay and there has to be supersonic flow mac number then i will form again oblique shock wave says that mac number should be supersonic my wave angle will be less than 90 degree then and then i will be name it as a oblique shock wave and then say their flow deflection angle will be at a some certain angle there will be some magnitude but it will not equal to zero which is unlikely to be uh, in normal shock wave i hope this is this points are clear now we will see these parameters and we will start forming the equations okay so let's say let's say you are having uh, this kind of uh, wave uh, this kind of angle so these are uh, let's say it aircraft surface you are having this kind of uh, uh, angled surface you are having okay so just for uh, imagine as of now you are uh, let's say this is a cockpit just for understanding i'm saying not let's say cockpit let's say you have this kind of car na sometime so what do you do this is these are the at a some angle okay 
so this is the actual surface right this is the actual surface now now what happens if supersonic flow uh, approach to this kind of uh, wedge uh, approach to this kind of angle so this is name it as a con this corner is named as a concave corner okay, this kind of corner is named as a concave corner so sometimes they always they will say a uh, flow is approaching to the concave corner like that now my motive is to analyze what will happen if supersonic flow will approach this concave corner so this is a solid body guys your flow cannot penetrate in, inside it this is not possible okay i hope this is clear now let's start analyzing that let me make it more clear so i'll try to have it more precisely so that we can mark the angles properly and okay now it is fine i think right so this is solid surface i told you now what is happening now supersonic flow is approaching right so there will be formation of shock wave okay this formation of a shock wave and now this is oblique shock wave because it is a it is at a certain angle normal shock wave means it is at normal condition like it is normal from the flow direction but when you say oblique oblique means it which is at a, at a some angle okay that is named as oblique right so this is oblique shock angle and now it is having less than 90 that means it is not like this right this is normal shock wave oblique shock wave is at a some angle i hope this is again clear now if i from this angle if you measure this is your shock angle which is beta i already told you this is shock angle which is beta this is your flow deflection angle this is theta i hope this is also clear and now from now on my motive is to analyze again here m1 is approaching here p1 is there here t1 is and t not one p not one is present now again my motive is to analyze what is what will happen across the downstream of the shock wave or downstream of the oblique shock so this is what your gate question will be that they will give some mach number and they will give shock angle and they will give theta angle flow deflection angle and they can ask what is the m2 here so this is what the gate question when we start solving numerical we'll see how to use this equation and how to analyze the oblique shock okay so as of now roughly you have clear that what they are going to ask or the theory question which you can expect that this kind of th theory question you can expect or you can expect that p2 will be less than p1 or p2 will be greater than p1 in your gate exam uh, similarly what will be the temperature uh, temperature variation it will be greater or it will be lesser similarly you can expect density and p0 and t0 also so this kind of question you can expect in your gate exam okay let me have this so this is concave corner and let me erase this i want more space concave corner oblique shock obey now let's analyze let's start analyzing this guys so here these are the properties these are the properties you are having after the downstream after the downstream you are having p02 t02 p1 t1 here it is a so again this is station number 1 and this is station number 2 okay and what is entropy density uh, mach number which is m2 what is velocity v2 here it is v1 okay these are the things we will be capturing in the oblique shock wave so now let's go into the geometry now it is at some angle so we need to use geometry okay so now okay now am i i'm taking the shock wave i'm taking this shock wave and i'll start analyzing this shock wave okay so let me do it here so so this is a shock wave and this is what the uh, flow okay so if you see this is your shock wave angle from the horizontal let me let me also define the axis this is y axis this is x axis so now flow is approaching to the this shock wave 
right fine because of this slope because of this slope your flow cannot penetrate right here it cannot penetrate it cannot go inside so what will happen your you will see uh, after downstream mach number your mach number c there is a uh, some flow deflection angle so it will always maintain the flow deflection angle so it cannot be like this it cannot be like this it will be exactly exactly at a angle of theta that means let's say let's say you have this kind of uh, uh, stop obstacle so if your flow is coming your flow will always follow this obstacle that means it will always follow the tendency of the your uh, flow deflection angle so we name it as a it says we say always follow the flow tendency direction i hope this is clear okay i hope this is clear that means whatever angle you are here that that steam line will be also in the theta direction so there is a some angle which is theta this is theta so once the flow crosses the shock wave i know this is m1 so once your flow crosses the shock wave i told you in the last lecture again shock wave decreases its velocity that means it decreases its velocity means v2 will be less than v1 but in the normal shock wave it was 100% sure that your m2 will be less than 1 but here this will not happens for weak shock solution i'm talking about uh, as of now we are talking about the weak shock solution guys so weak shock solutions okay so just remember this we'll understand when we see theta by time graph what is weak shock solution what is strong shock solution so across weak shock solution your m2 will be less than m1 but we cannot comment on that it it uh, it will be supersonic or it will be subsonic because m1 is supersonic right but it will less than m2 so hence m2 can be supersonic uh, m2 can be supersonic or it can be subsonic both are possible i hope this is clear but uh, in oblique shock wave for the weak shock solution you will always have this condition so as of now just remove this topic uh, your flow will be will, when we will see strong shock solution we will see that m2 will be again less than 1 so for from now on your m2 will be supersonic supersonic okay but it will be less than m1 okay i hope this is clear similarly your velocity will be lesser than v1 and t2 when your uh, uh, okay when your pressure is decreasing uh, when your velocity decreasing pressure uh, increases because shock wave is nothing but compressional wave which compresses your gases or fluid and it increases your pressure that's what shock wave does that's what the intent of the shock wave is and when pressure p2 will be greater than p1 t2 will be greater than t1 rho 2 will be greater than rho 1 similarly entropy will again increases and when entropy is increasing why it is increasing because of the across we have seen across the shock wave you have the losses stagnation pressure loss or energy loss but t naught will be again conserved okay so these are all the property you must have this okay i hope this is clear yeah i hope this is clear this flow property again the, you should have this in your notes because they have asked many theory questions from this so this is not just i'm um, giving you to make you understand but no but these are the actual thing which they have asked in your gate exam you take any of your previous year paper you will find this kind of questions 100 percent now come to the what we want to analyze then we'll see so this is the m1 which is uh, approaching the shock wave okay there will be some parallel component if we take normal component to it we take normal component to it there will be parallel so this is normal component we name it as a m n1 normal component and if you resolve this there will be normal uh, parallel component so this is in name given to it so m t1 tangential component okay Th this is the angle and this is if this is parallel to this this is parallel to this or uh, yeah these two are parallel then why what we can do then what will be the angle 
if this is beta then this will be also beta and this is perpendicular okay now this flow is crossing and here you are getting let me this is theta so here you are getting m2 right let me make it more so that it will be more more clear now you have m2 at the downstream condition so let me give it a downstream this is this is one so this is the uh, perpendicular component so there will be also one perpendicular component it is not exactly perpendicular so yeah i hope you, you can understand it. so this is perpendicular this is what guys this is m and 2 normal component the downstream direction in the downstream this is the normal component at the upstream this will be what can you tell me this will be m t 2 tangential component in the downstream of the oblique shock wave i hope this much is clear and if you calculate this angle beta minus theta i hope this much is clear and you understood this very well upstream downstream okay and again if you uh, make a control volume a1 will be equals to a2 how if you do this take this and do this whatever area you are having here and here a1 and a2 both will be the same thing i hope this is also clear now now guys please focus on this you need to understand this otherwise you will not understand the oblique shock wave now i hope this is clear now the important thing comes now for this oblique shock wave this is the normal component right these are the normal component what does it mean can i say for this component this is this shock wave is acting as a normal shock wave right this shock wave is acting as a normal shock wave so this is mn1 and this is mn2 which is nothing but this am i correct or not tell me so if it is this then what i will do i will use my normal shock wave relations to compute these quantities okay now what you can do they in the question they will provide beta okay and they will also provide what is uh, m1 so what you can do you can easily calculate mn1 from trigonometry right so mn1 will be m1 sin beta so block this formula you can easily get from this trigonometry if you do trigonometry of uh, upstream condition you will get this so now you know mn1 guys so now i hope you understood where i am going to now you know m1 mn1 now you use normal shock wave relation to compute mn2 and uh, if you know if you can recall that formula i have given that this is the formula i have given right you don't have the uh, derivation or relations for the alone oblique shock wave you use so oblique shock wave is a special case of normal shock wave right so you use your all normal shock wave relation to uh, to the oblique shock wave to compute the property in the downstream condition i hope this this statement is clear to you so now from now on you know m and 1 because m1 and beta will be given you know m and 1 you know this m and 1 you can compute don't forget to take this root to the uh, right hand side now you can compute m and 2 m and 2 will be always greater than uh, always greater than sorry 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 m and 2 now from now on we know we know for normal shock wave if m1 is a super if uh, yeah if m1 is a supersonic your m2 is always subsonic guys what does it mean this will be this m and 2 will be some quantity and it will be m and 2 will be always less than 1 that means this quantity will be approximately 0 0.6 or sometimes 0 0.7 you cannot go more than 1 and you cannot go below 0 0.376 something it was right yes yeah you cannot go 0 0.378 below you will be in between this range only because as of now we are uh, resolve have we resolved the oblique shock wave and we have break into the normal component and tangential component so right i hope this is clear now you know m and 2 you have computed using normal shock wave formula now m and 2 you know uh, now you use the trigonometry at the downstream condition m2 will be m and 2 divided by 
sin beta minus theta. So this is your M2. Now, if they ask in exam, what is the Mach number at the downstream condition? You should never answer this M and 2 guys. This is not the, because what we have done for our analysis, but this will not happen in the actual life. Mach number to downstream condition is this value, which is M2. That means you have to do this well, this calculation, this you have to do, and this M2 you, you need to approach for. And this is the actual Mach number, the downstream of the oblique shock wave. And it will be always greater than one for weak shock solution I'm talking. Fine. I hope this is clear. And these are the important formula, which I want you to block this. This formula, this formula eventually you know from oblique shock, uh, from normal shock wave relation and this formula. So these three formula and this trigonometry you should have in your notes. Okay, 100%. To solve oblique shock wave questions. So, whenever I'm speaking, many theory points I'm telling you. So, you should always note down this theory point will make you understand and solve it. It will able to you solve for theory questions. Okay, it will make you to able you able. Now, now go for now. Let's go for now. The I told you already that m and one will be greater than one, which is supersonic, and m and two will be less than one because we are dealing with the normal shock wave here. But M1 will be greater than 1 and M2 will be also greater than 1, but it will be less than M1. I hope these properties are clear. Now, let's come to the uh, one more thing I am having. Now I told you this properties, right? Now one more thing which they have asked in your gate exam, that is nothing but this value. So now if you see, if you go for derivation of momentum equation of y direction, if you do, do the derivation of uh, uh, momentum equation of y direction, what you will get that at the end you will get m t one, not m t one. Vt1 is equals to Vt2, so which they have asked in a gate exam. So this is what guys. So let me please listen this. This is your tangential component of velocity. Let me write this. Tangential component of velocity. So from now on, you always remember that tangential component tangential component is always conserved that means vt1 is always equals to vt2 100 percent but 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 at the same time mt1 is not equals to mt2 now they have asked in the many interview that if velocity is same why mach number is not same now let me answer this question if you see your mach number depends on Gamma RT. This is VT2 divided by gamma RT2. Now, if your velocities are conserved, these are conserved guys. So, if you see here, you are having some temperature, the downstream you are having different temperature, right? Because across the shock wave, I told you, we have seen the property, temperature is changing, static temperature, right? So, these quantities is different, guys. T2 and T1 are different. Hence, your Mach number is not same. These ratios will be different and Mach number is not same. But your velocities will be same, not Mach. So, they have asked theory question across, I think in 2021, which ID Bombay has conducted. In 2021, they have asked that Mach number across the normal shock wave or tangential Mach number is conserved or not. This is what they have asked. So I hope you can answer this question now. So block these two things, very important. And I told you why these are not, Mach number, why it is not conserved? Because there are temperature difference. But velocities are conserved because velocity does not depend on the, uh, uh, yeah, velocity does not depend on the temperature. The speed of sound depends on temperature, right? Velocity is not. I hope this is again clear. Now you can ask your theory questions, many of theory questions.
yeah i think this much is good enough now now let's see how to compute pressure ratios temperature ratios density ratio across the oblique shock wave so if you see again you can now apply your pressure ratios from normal shock wave relation so this is again applicable because static property doesn't bother about the velocities guys right that doesn't bother about the angle involved so from as of now for our if you go for any book so here it is p1 so in the this condition in this hair in this region and this region this will pressure will be uniform okay so it doesn't bother about the uh, what angle it is so i hope you understood this so this becomes mn1 so mark this you need to use mn1 here okay you cannot use simply m1 uh, yeah so people have done many mistakes when they calculate pressure ratio for oblique shock wave so you need to calculate you need to use mn1 normal component of mach number okay and i think i have not given this yeah i have given already this now i hope you can easily calculate pressure ratio across the oblique shock wave uh, if you go for density ratio the way of calculating mach number is this this is the way i hope it is clear so density ratio is given by told you this will come here mn1 divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 mn1 square this is the density ratio block this formula in your formula sheet these are the expression used in solving numericals temperature ratio i already told you p2 by p1 rho1 by rho2 you compute p2 by p1 here from here rho2 by rho1 from here and substitute this value and you can do this again t2 by t1 will be greater than 1 right because t2 is greater than t1 now yeah now i told you that p01 is not conserved so p02 will be less than p01 so how to compute the pressure stagnant pressure ratio this is given by again delta s by r and you are having the again energy losses hence what you will say there is a irreversible irreversible adiabatic flow okay first name given to it second one is non isentropic flow this two name given to it so i hope this is again clear what uh, oblique shock wave is how it is formed and how we can analyze and this trigonometry similarly you can do this trigonometry for velocity components also okay so we'll see how to use these equations to solve oblique shock wave we'll see good uh, lengthy numerical and in that we will try to capture all the components of oblique shock wave and we'll see how th those quantity changes so in the next lecture uh, we'll straight away start with the Uh, moving normal shock wave then we'll see the theta beta m relation which is really important to understand this oblique shock wave in uh, much details and they have asked many questions from theta beta m relation also so theta beta m relation is just extension of your oblique shock wave so okay guys so let's meet in the next lecture thank you